What's up guys, welcome back to Street Car Shenanigans YouTube channel. It has been a while since we've given you an update on what's going on in the shop. Uh, it's crazy madness here. We finally got that grudge car that we've been referencing out. Uh, it's outside right now, getting, wait, waiting to get picked up. And we are working on a handful of other projects. In today's episode, we are gonna be covering what we're gonna be doing going into this weekend. Uh, we have two events coming up. We have the MKE Streetcar Takeover tomorrow, which is test and tune until about 7.45. And we're probably gonna try to get the red car there to test and Dan's car there to test. Um, we'll see which one we're gonna focus more on. We really wanna get Dan's car ironed out and get it below the 11.5 range. Uh, all by just changing the 60 foot time, which will bring you, that's gonna be a separate video. Uh, also today, um, the red car is getting a new intercooler. So I'm gonna show you guys that, it's freaking massive. It's a Treadstone R, it's their 1200R with uh, lower end tanks, meaning it like feeds the bottom, it's like your standard. So here is the one we decided to put in the Lightning, which is basically the same model number, same core, but it's, it's like six inches narrower. And this thing's pretty freaking massive. I mean, this is a good intercooler. They rate up to a thousand plus. Now we have this massive thing. It is huge. I hope we can fit it in the front of the Cobra. Three inch in, three inch out with a diverter in there so it uses a whole intercooler. It is really heavy. I mean, we'll, we'll weigh it and I'm curious what it'll weigh versus the one that's on it. So those are the first things we're working on. We are in the final rendition stages of the Lightning build again. I guess we'll just use this to, as the uh, media for what the fuck is going on with the Lightning. Uh, the Lightning has been a huge pain in the ass for over a year now, and we are finally, hopefully, fingers crossed, finishing it. This most recent, what's going on, was caused by a Morel lifter failure once again. So we've had two Morel lifter failures in this engine, or in this truck, I should say, both different engines, and they've wreaked havoc. Now with the first engine, it was like whatever, we're gonna put a real motor in and just take that one out earlier than expected. This one, another lifter failure, caused three pistons to get scarred up skirts. Uh, not terrible, but enough to cause the piston to rock in the, in the uh, cylinder and it was causing like a knocking sound. Um, it had a couple bad lifters again that were collapsed and it was just, it's just a complete mess. So we came, took it all the way apart, all the way down to a short block or all the way down to just the block, uh, got the, Pistons coated, got the block rehoned, uh, put new rings in it, new rod bearings. Uh, now we switch to a Howard billet lifter, uh, which is still not a limit travel race lifter, which is what we were trying to avoid. Uh, but it does look, seem to be a really quality component, so we will let you know what they sound like. Um, based on the design, they look like they're gonna probably be a little bit noisy, but I'll take a little bit of noise for reliability and not having the issues that we've been having. Uh, so just to show you guys kind of where we're at, <clears throat> It is all back together. Now it does have an A1 transmission built, E4OD, all billet everything. It has a circle D torque converter, which we put in there with this blower combination. Uh, but now it's in there on a built trans. It still has the trans cooler that we put on. We did remove the remote filter that was on it based on A1's recommendation. And these valve covers are temporary. They're just on there. Uh, we have the other valve covers. We baffled them because we were getting a lot of PCV. Uh, oil in here, so we rebaffled those and welded AN bunks on it rather than using an adapter and we're waiting for those to come back from powder. We also dropped off at powder all the intake piping, uh, so that'll all be powder coated this time around, which is what the uh, customer wanted from the beginning, but we wanted to make sure that we had everything bead rolled and everything was nice before we spent all the money on powder coating. Another major change we made is to the motor mounts, I'll put a picture up. We solidified them. Matt welded the plates in around the outside, so now it's solid motor mounts. Reason being, when this thing was just idling before, sitting here in the shop, I mean, this thing was rocking like half inch, three quarters of an inch, just and it was aggressive. I did not think that if this thing was even launched on a foot brake, that those motor mounts were gonna last. Uh, and now with a built trans and a higher stall converter, they don't stand a chance. So we did go ahead and weld up the motor mounts. It raised the engine up maybe uh, eighth of an inch, which was just enough to interfere with the firewall. So I had to do a little bit more clearancing on the firewall last night, nothing crazy. Uh, but everything is starting to go back on. The accessories are on, the blower's on. Belts are not tight yet. We have to prime the engine and get the cooling system sealed up. And then all we're gonna be waiting for is the stuff back from powder and we'll be bringing you guys the final rendition of this. 
Whew. Uh, so now I'm leaving. I'm gonna go grab the red car. We're gonna get up on the lift and uh, rip the front bumper off. See what kind of clearance we're gonna have for the intercooler. I think it'll work, but it is really heavy and it is really big. So modifications will be necessary. We're hoping that we don't need to redo all the intercooler piping uh, right now. We obviously want to and do it in aluminum. Probably save you know, the difference in weight between the old intercooler and this one by getting rid of all that steel piping. Okay. Uh, but time is of the essence. Come so, yeah, and probably cool it down a little more. All right guys, so we got the red car on the lift. Uh, I gotta figure out what, maybe like a chest mount GoPro or something, because when we drive the cars, we obviously have a good time in that, but you can't like hold it and drive it well, so you guys didn't get to see the ride here. But uh, here is, this thing is filthy. Oh my gosh, it needs to get detailed so bad. Um, here's the intercooler currently. And I wanted to see if the core was the same, just visually. So this core on the car right now is roughly like 23 and a half, just the core size itself. This core size is 28. So the core itself is four inches wider than this one. And then this side has three inch inlet, three inch outlet. However, the inside just goes straight through. So a lot of times they heat soak the bottom of the intercooler because it's just blowing through. The Treadstone, one of the main reasons why we're going to try to give this one a whirl, aside from the size increase, it has a diverter in there. So make sure to blow air up and use the top end of the portion also. So that'll help, hopefully. So it was breaking up. Uh, it had, since we pulled it up, it's been breaking up on the higher RPM. So a couple things we're going to do to keep that in check. Obviously lower the intake air temp charge because it might be detonating. I don't think that's the cause. Uh, but most likely I have these plugs probably gap between like 30 and 35. I probably got to kick that way down to like 22. Uh, with the added heat and added boost, that's going to be uh, a contender for a major issue. Uh, so they got the front wheels off. I'm going to get the front bumper off and we're going to keep you guys cycling here. Well, there's the old setup. Bumper off, nice uh, miscolored <laughs> piping, but... <laughs> very, very little cutting. She is a little bit wider. Go down a little bit to see the comparison. There's the. It's not the same core. No, that was like same a style core. Yeah, this one's like thicker. That one's tighter. What? That is a wee bit of a difference. <laughs> we gotta weigh it and weigh the, the old one. All right, so what we gotta do is take these off. Yep. And then four bolts. This thing, we might not even have to redo any intercooler I mean. No, we said we might have to like chop this. Yeah, we might have to chop, chop this chop down a little bit. Because I think it's right inside of it. It's pretty close, but. Some trimming is required. What? Hi. Hey, I was saying some trimming is required. All right, so Matt just got done trimming some spots. Nothing crazy. We're going to start light. Just a little bit of contour. Ooh, that, you match that pretty well with the bumper support there. Um, and we're going to try to get the intercooler in. Now, I'll post a couple pictures of the core differences. We took some pictures like through it. And the Treadstone core, both the inside and the outside have like a like a weave pattern to it which will increase the surface area of the the uh, air going of the aluminum while the air is going over it to cool more surface area of the intercooler so that should help um, hypothetically and then well uh, another big difference is the old Goodwin performance eBay intercooler weighed 23 pounds on the nose and the new Treadstone intercooler weighs 33 pounds on the nose Unfortunately, switching to aluminum piping will probably not net us 10 pounds, but we should be able to make up for like half of that. Yeah. 
So at least it won't be a huge difference on the front end weight. Uh, but we're gonna try to fit it again. Hey, go up there. Throw the workout, buddy. I feel it. No. How's she look? Crooked. Crooked. <laughs> not, not too bad. It needs to get straight up and down. Don't you think? But what's stopping it? Oh, I guess not. They're not even hitting it. Yeah, it doesn't. Huh? Cool. Oh, damn. It's, it, was, it just needs to be. Bottom just needs to be pushed in so the top needs to just come out. Are you trying to go up to meet the other stuff? Oh, hi. No, I mean, I don't think it really needs to go much higher than that. This is already a. Right. It's already in the last one. Yeah, yeah. So it could bottom. probably go down, and then we could try to suck the bottom in. Yeah, the bottom definitely needs Man, I guess, hey, are you, you touching your there? bumper support on your side with the mounting? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Um, the only thing I could see is the higher, the better, because then you're losing the bottom of the radiator support. Getting more of it. Because it's up tight. No, this hits, that. This, this will get that open part in the bumper right here. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but there's no on the back side. No side. Alright, what's up guys? So we kind of cut the video a little bit shorter. Um, you guys didn't see us totally wrap up the intercooler install in this video. Uh, unfortunately, we were like busting to just kind of get it done, so we stopped where you saw. So I have a few images here just showing a close-up of the intercooler difference and what it looked like fully installed. I mean, it really fit great on the Mustang. I mean, it was almost like designed for the Fox Body SN95 chassis because it fits right between the uh, frame horns or bumper supports, whatever you want to call them, that come off the core support, fit right between there. We actually welded tabs right to that and uh, bolted it and the side mounts that Treadstone cast into their end tanks and it worked out really good. I mean, the, the intercooler ended up working fantastically, so if you guys haven't seen the MKE uh, slash Anarchy No Prep video where we actually raced the car, uh, check the link in the description down below. Uh, but we dropped roughly 50 60 degrees of intake air temp charge from the last time we were at the track so, and the car pulled super hard it picked up a bunch of boost so you know that that, that treadstone intercooler was well worth it and uh, as you saw my excitement in the anarchy video it, it definitely made a huge difference so right now that so that's all wrapped up that car's done um, we're going to be retuning it with a three bar map sensor and we're debating putting on e85 before we do that um, you know it's just nine dollars a gallon gets old fast and we can probably make the same power if not more on on the 85 so we're going to debate changing that over to 85 before retuning it with a three bar map sensor as of right now it pegs the map sensor on like 15 pounds of boost at like 6300 rpm so now we are driving to broadhead wisconsin we we're going to body crafters john weiss painted the hood of the uh, new york car so we put a HO Fiber Trends two inch cowl hood on it or two and a half inch cowl hood. It looks sweet. You guys will see it here shortly. And then hopefully we're gonna get this thing on the dyno. Now if we do get on the dyno today, uh, that will be a separate video. You're not gonna see that right now, but um, yeah, pretty pumped. The intercooler turned out good, that was worth it. And then we'll show you guys what the New York car looks like now that it's got a painted hood. We still need to put an emblem in the grill. And then otherwise the exterior is pretty much wrapped up aside from wheels and tires. We've been waiting on the rear 31530 R18 888Rs for like going on two months now. And unfortunately there's not like an ETA on when they're gonna come in. So that kind of stinks. We might end up ordering a different rear tire but the owner really wants to have all four triple R's and I don't blame them. So we'll see what unfolds with that, but hopefully we're gonna get that thing on the dyno. It's kind of raining right now, so we're gonna wait out the rain, see if we can drive it back when it dries up. Um, I think that's it. That wraps up this video. Any thoughts, Dan? Just should we drive both Cobras? Yeah, we are gonna take Dan's well, car. To come get this one. No, the house in the morning, right? Oh, and the lightning runs. You guys will see that. Co We're going to have a lot of content on the lightning coming up. We've been kind of keeping it under wraps up until this point, uh, just because we've had a handful of problems with it. And now it's running, driving. We've probably got about 50 miles on it, working on tuning it, getting the trans tuning wrapped up. 
Uh, we do have some temperature problems with the transmission, but we are going to uh, be getting to the bottom of that. We're not sure if it's just where the sensor location is in the trans. That might be reading a little bit higher than, it, than the fluid temp, or if it really is running that hot, then we obviously have to work on uh, getting it to cool down, whether that's a converter change or, you know, we can't really put a bigger cooler on it. We got like the biggest cooler we can put on it. So hopefully that's not the problem. But we're working with A1 transmission, circle D converter, US shift. Uh, those are all the guys who are involved in the transmission converter and controller. And we will get to the bottom of that also. Yeah. So exactly. any, what's it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a glass thing. But we we're gonna we did a ton of I mean there's just so much work done on the lightning that's different than the last time you guys seen it. So we're pretty pumped about it. We're we're happy that's moving on. We have a lot of new projects in the shop that we're gonna start recording on. But this is the wrap up on the intercooler video. Uh, subscribe down below so you guys can see what's coming up next. Uh, as always, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.